Hey everybody, DIY Dad coming back to you for another DIY project. It seems like there's a constant list of them these days, uh, but with COVID, hey, it's not like I've got a bunch of other stuff to do. So uh, this one involves this car that I'm driving right now. This is our 2012 Chevy Volt. Uh, I will say I absolutely adore this car. We've had it for a number of years. Uh, I've put 41,000 miles on the car. I reset the trip odometer right after we bought it. So I can tell you just from looking at it, this is all me. Uh, this car has been getting 82 miles to the gallon with my driving. Um, aggregate total on the infotainment system is 74, I think, miles to the gallon. So uh, even across various different driving styles, uh, it's really efficient car to drive. It's very fun, it's very quick. Um, this is a more traditional hybrid, more like, not like your Prius or anything, where you've got a gas and electric engine that are always engaged together. Uh, this thing is purely electric drive, but it's still a hybrid. So what that means in this car is that when the battery gets low, a gas engine kicks on and it functions like a generator. All it's doing is providing power to the battery system, which then runs the electric motor, which spins the wheels. So there's no gas engine connected to the drive system at all. What that means is this car is very quiet and very efficient. Uh, gas engine's running right now and there's almost no engine noise. It's a continuously variable transmission, so it doesn't shift, it just kind of keeps going. Uh, it is pretty darn quick. It jumps in and out of traffic without a problem, and we, we love this. I mean, it holds both of the car seats for the kids, and we still have enough room uh, to be comfortable in it, and that's coming from a six foot one driver. So uh, it is a small car, but it fits me pretty well, and I've never had a concern about creature comfort. What I do have a concern about is the reason why I'm in this car right now and uh, what we're doing today. Uh, the way we typically drive this car, we very rarely use gasoline. And this little blue indication on the left is indicating that we are in gas mode right now and have been for the last several days. And the reason is the first generation Chevy Volts had a problem with the charger and it's more or less a design problem, but it leads to a situation that can be potentially pretty dangerous. So we haven't been charging the car for the last several days. I'm gonna fix this problem today, so I'll take you along with me. We'll discuss a little bit what it does, uh, how to see the warning signs of this happening, and then those of you with a uh, first-generation Class 1 charger will talk about how to fix it and kind of how to avoid this problem uh, if you haven't had this problem yet. So that's what we're gonna be doing today, and I'll transition over to the garage. We'll show you what we're looking at. All right, so here we are in the garage, and this is where as we first started noticing this issue. So I've had the car for about four years and about two years ago, I started noticing that the outlet on the wall back there where I was plugging this in uh, was starting to look a little bit weird. And if you look at it, you'll see it's actually scorched a little bit. This one plug, this one pin right here, both in the top and bottom is brown. Now, I thought maybe this was bad wiring in the garage. I actually replaced a different outlet that I was plugging into before and it started doing the same thing again, always that same pin, uh, no matter where I moved it. So looking at the charger, and this is the charger that comes with the car, it's the Voltec Class 1 charger, I started noticing that there was actually damage showing up on the plug itself. If you look, this is actually uh, quite burnt and scorched on that one pin. And this is a problem of design. This charger has a handle on it, right? It's meant to be portable. Cable comes out of the top, and the cable's got this nice little 90 degree bend. Now that implies that you can just plug this in and let it hang. Now, yeah, there's little mounting spots in the back, and I think it says pretty explicitly in the manual, don't hang it from the plug, but everybody does. And if you do that enough, the pressure that that puts on these pins can actually break the pins on the inside of the plug. Then you get electricity arcing across that gap, creates heat, heat melts the outlet, melts the plug, and can start your garage on fire. So not a good thing. Uh, a few years into the Chevy Volt, they actually changed the design on this so that the plug came out of the side instead of out of the top to try to address that issue and force people to mount it as opposed to hanging it uh, to avoid, you know, burning people's houses down. So for us, what we need to do is replace that plug. Now, there's nothing complicated about that. I have a uh, just heavy duty plug that I bought at Lowe's that we're going to be using for this. We're literally just going to cut this one off, strip the wires back, hook it into the new plug, tighten everything up and we'll be done. Pretty simple DIY project. I'm going to show you the inside of this in case you've never looked at the inside of a power cable before. 
Um, it is about as straightforward as this gets. So two, three minutes, we're gonna be done. So I've cut the end off and I wanted to show this to you because it actually kind of surprised me a little bit. As I was stripping this wire back, the inner casing on this white wire is just completely falling apart. You can see it's kind of cracking there as I go further back. So from all the heat this has been exposed to, it's actually disintegrated the wire back almost two inches from the plug. So you can see how bad this was getting. Also on the plug itself, uh, kind of looking at it a little bit, like this pin is very firm, that pin is very firm, and this one uh, is not, it wiggles all over the place. So uh, once we get this project done, I'll probably cut this plug open so we can take a look on the inside and see what kind of damage is going on in here because I'm guessing it's fairly advanced. So uh, I had to strip back about two inches to get to clean wire. I'm gonna go back about another half, cut this outer coating off, and then cut off all of this wire that's gotten pretty brittle from the heat. So we're gonna use the gooder, or the gooder, the better part of the wire back here. Uh, and that's what we're gonna hook into our plug. This is the plug that I chose. I didn't go with the 90 degree, so I wanted to remind myself never to hang it from this plug again. So um, it's just a standard heavy duty plug. Essentially what ends up happening here is we're gonna strip these wires back and then they slide into these three terminals and then screws on the side, tighten in little connector plates to hold everything securely and end up with a nice insulated tight fit. And then this piece closes over top and screws tight and you're left with um, a pretty stable outlet. So I'm gonna strip this back and then cut off the brittle part of these wires, strip out about, oh, about a quarter of an inch, half an inch of bare wire to go into here, and then we'll tighten it up and uh, just check in once before we close everything up. Okay, my wires are stripped back and I've got my outlet ready. So when you're actually wiring this back, it's a standard 120 volt. Uh, what you're gonna be looking at is a white, a black, and a green wire. And if you look at the sides of this, you notice I've got a silver screw, a gold screw, and a green screw. Essentially, silver goes to white, gold goes to black, green goes to ground or green. So uh, for most of your outlets, that's going to be the way it works. If you're looking at the outside, this left-hand pin is your black wire, right-hand pin is your white wire, and then, of course, your base wire, your ground, goes down here. So I'm going to get that installed, get this plug hooked up, and then we'll close up the clamshell and we'll be done. All right, so everything is buttoned up and plugged in. Uh, I've got my charger plugged in here. You can see the lights on top of the charger are all lit up. So self-test worked fine, which means my grounding is good and my polarity is correct on the cable and on the plug. So ready to go, all I gotta do is plug into the car. But if you look over my shoulder, it just started pouring. So as much as I really wanna plug this in and see the car start charging, I'm gonna wait. A little bit on that uh, and while I do I'm gonna finish this up with a dad joke so what do you call somebody with no nose and no body nobody knows take care guys we'll see you next time